the whole purpose of the industry connect is to meet the industry's experts and connect with the people who are aspiring product managers and entrepreneurs. And we are very fortunate that uh, we have today Naman Sarangi here. And he has been working in startups all through from the time he started his career. A brief about uh, Naman, he is basically a consumer web entrepreneur focused on building usable products and uh, focus on knowing the customer insights for building the products. And uh, he basically, he was the first hire in free charge. First person who was hired in free charge and he was responsible for building total uh, users from zero early, you know, idea to one lakh users, that kind of growth he has done. And uh, head of the products in free charge, he was handling products, marketing, business development, all, all through. And uh, one of the things, you know, what mind boggling in free charge they have done as a team is uh, kind of customer acquisition and early growth. That was like initial 100 days, they were able to create around uh, I think 2,000 transactions per day, that kind of growth, and with a customer acquisition of 4 rupees per user. Pretty much, you know, that kind of huge growth was all possible because of him. And after that, uh, he left uh, Free Charge, he had joined Jibdial. You might have heard of uh, Jibdial recently or a news. And he was uh, taking a lot of product initiative in Jibdial, which was uh, like missed call alert, which is an innovative idea itself, and Twitter acquired it recently. And he was also as a working as a product manager in Jibdial. And after that, he started own firm, own company, which was Find Yogi way back in 2012, which was, which is basically a kind of shopping decision search mechanism. Like you have many comp, like we have Snapdeal, Flipkart, right? Which is the best, uh, best place you can get your consumer electronics products. That is what Find Yogi is all about. So we are going to hear from him how his startup journey and bit of, of course, evaluating internet idea and how that can make a difference in your life and how that can help us to incubator ideas and make a business out of it. With this a big round of applause, let me help you with Naman on the stage. Thank you. This song? Uh, thank you, Jagannath. Uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll start with, uh, you know, how I look at internet product ideas. A uh, lot of you might disagree at different points and I think that should be a good starting point for discussions. Uh, so, you know, the first rules for any internet idea, you know, uh, when you look at uh, value creation, okay, or what humans do, they essentially either create products or they sell products. Everything else is like an auxiliary function, okay, even if you look at a startup, somebody is building a product and somebody is helping make money out of that product, everything else is just a support function, the accounts guy, the marketing guy, everything is a support function. So, you know, when I look at web, web being an information medium can help you sell product, it doesn't create a product. You know, you might look at SaaS tools, say Google, Google is actually a web product, okay. But Google is, I would look at it as an internet product, it's an email client and the gmail.com is helping distribute that email client, okay. So again, uh, the way I look at web is it's a lead generation platform. Everything from knockery.com to housing.com to findyogi.com to Flipkart, everything is a lead generation platform. Uh, Facebook is a lead generation platform. The way I look at Facebook is, you know, if there's an article shared by your friend uh, on Facebook, you click on that link, you go and read the article. Facebook generated lead for a reader for that publication. Okay. So again, everything is a lead generation platform. Ideas, whatever idea you have is going to help you start, but it's also going to create that long-term path. And long-term path is important because if your idea doesn't become big, it's useless. On the internet, you're either a billion dollar company or you're going to die. Okay, so you know, if you if you are looking to start up, if you are going to pitching to investors, they'll say uh, the market isn't big, and you might look at the market as a hundred million dollar market, but when they say big, they mean at least a billion dollar, nothing less than billion dollar, and and billion dollar here is not a hypothetical number; they actually mean billion dollar. Okay. So when I was starting Find Yogi, a lot of investors told me, you know, hundred million market, that's it, and I said like hundred million, na tumne dekha na maine dekha, so you know. 100 million sounded big to me because at that time Flipkart had raised only 5 million dollars. Uh, housing did not exist. Snapdeal uh, had raised some uh, again 5 million dollars. Free charge has raised uh, uh, some uh, 4 million dollars. So 100 million dollar market looked very uh, addressable big enough market today. Uh, that day. But today when I look at you know if I have to do an IPO of a company 100 million dollar does not make sense. Okay. So again you have to either be, become big. And so your idea is important whether it will scale up to become a big idea or not. Okay. And you must become the biggest player in your industry. 
So if you are a hiring platform, for example, in India, if you have to win the market, you have to be, beat knockery.com. You cannot be a second player in the market. On the internet, doesn't just doesn't work, you know. If you're google.com, 90% of searches are with you. The next player probably has 9%, and 9% is difficult to survive on. Okay. So there are three factors that we are going to, you know, help evaluate a business idea, a web business idea again, to be very particular. How far are you from a product? When I say a product, it is something that the user wants. So if I am buying a mobile phone, the product is not flipkart.com, the product is that mobile phone. So I'm looking at how far is flipkart.com from that product, okay? Target audience, again, you know, target audience can be defined based on geography, the device, the category, uh, the age group, everything, you know, so uh, which target audience you're trying to capture is important. We'll uh, be introducing a term called bundling and unbundling, which is very common on the internet. And every business idea revolves around either bundling an older idea or unbundling an older idea. So we'll look at that. And a pipe versus platform, you know, uh, we'll discuss about what are the advantages of building a platform rather than a pipe. We'll define what pipe is in the internet terms. So again, I defined a product is something that a user desires. Okay, so Flipkart.com is not a product. Okay, the mobile phone that Flipkart.com sells. Tiny Owl is not a product. The food that Tiny Owl, Owl dis, uh, you know delivers is probably the product. Okay. We are looking at three layers. The transaction layer becoming uh, is the closest to the product. So when I say the transaction layer, Flipkart is a transaction layer because it helps you. Okay, oh yeah. So it helps you do the payment part. It is the trust builder. Any transaction requires trust. It is the insurance mechanism because trust, that is why it's insurance. And it does logistics as well. Okay. So, and logistics does not mean physical delivery. It could mean just enabling. So if I'm buying an insurance from Policy Bazaar, if policybazaar.com is doing the logistics, it is that transaction layer. Okay, and again, transaction layer is generating lead for the product. Again, coming back, you know, uh, the whole idea over here is, you know, you start from the network layer. So I would uh, position Facebook and Google at the network layer. Network, again, it has to be a human network layer. The way Google is a human network layer because, you know, a lot of humans create websites and Google builds a network around those websites to create their ranking, ranking algorithm, etc. Okay, so the real humans are in the network layer. Next is the information layer where you actually decide what you should buy. So I would uh, probably put Find Yogi in that information layer. TripAdvisor is a very strong player in that information layer. And again, transaction layer, I said, you know, Flipkart is a strong transaction player, the transaction layer player. Okay. So the whole value on internet is driven, I said, lead generation. So when you're pushing the user from any of the outer layer to the inner layer, you are, gen you are generating value. You are generating lead for the inner layer. And the way to do that is, you know, you, uh, uh, you pull out a bait from the inner layer on the outer layer. So what uh, that means is, suppose there is an article that your friend read and he shares it on Facebook. Facebook will show you a snippet of that article, probably a very good image that will attract you and a good, you know, 160 characters of description. So that acts as a bait for you to actually click and then go to the inner layer. So when you are building that layer, it's important to communicate with the layers on both the side. So if I am, suppose, an information site, if my page gets shared on Facebook, I need to bring the user from Facebook to my site. And then from my site, it should go again inner layer into the transaction layer. That is when I'm generating value. If the user is moving within the layer, is probably confused, you can probably not monetize him. So if you keep going from Facebook to Twitter and back to Twitter, back to Facebook, you know, if you keep jumbling between the network layers, you're doing nothing. I mean, you're not, you are not a customer of the internet. It's difficult for me to make money out of you as a user. Okay. And probably the platform has some kind of feature gap. Okay. For example, you know, if you come to Find Yogi, we do not have videos for products. Okay. So if you have to go to YouTube and then look for videos, then come back to Find Yogi, then go to Flipkart. It means there's a feature gap and probably Find Yogi should have videos as well. So if the user is moving within the same layer, the product isn't comprehensive or it is, it, there's still some feature gap there. So again, uh, uh, coming back to Facebook, you know, uh, so there are, if you share an article and, you know, your friend sees that article, that's like a free bait, you know, Facebook doesn't make money out of it, but still it's important that the free baits are there because that is what is helping Facebook survive. 
Okay, you go to Facebook because you are going to find something interesting to read from there and go ahead and read. But then there are a lot of sponsored posts as well on Facebook. That is what is helping Facebook make money. Again, when I look at Google, you know, if the search wasn't free, it would be difficult for Google to actually attract so such a large audience. But the search is free and then there are sponsored links as well. Okay, so the basic value add should be there and then there should be something that makes money on that. Okay. So those baits are very important at, at all levels. Right. Again, I told you uh, the interaction between two layers are very, is very important. If the transaction layer alone will not survive. Okay, if I am a transaction website, I am not communicating with the information layer, I do not know how users will come to me. I am going to spend a lot of money in, in advertising and still users will not stick to me. Okay, so imagine if I am an e-commerce site, I create a standalone e-commerce site which has products listed, you can pay and you can, I'll deliver. But uh, if I don't know how decision, you know, from the decision making funnel to the transaction funnel, how the user is going to come. Either I'm going to build my own decision making funnel, which Flipkart has done till an extent, you know, it has all those filters and reviews to help you decide what to do, what to buy, right? So if you look at any big, internet company, they are mostly a mix of two layers. You know, if I look at uh, Flipkart, for example, transaction plus a little bit of information, TripAdvisor, information plus a little bit of network, and TripAdvisor is also banking on Facebook's network to uh, connect with the information better. How do you create that threat so that the person comes in? So suppose it is TripAdvisor, right? And uh, the person is checking, uh, suppose going somewhere or the other. So again, you said the user is searching on Google, so the user is still at the network layer. TripAdvisor must leave a bait in the network layer, which is done through SEO, search engine optimization. So TripAdvisor will create a lot of pages, get it indexed on Google. So when somebody searches for a relevant term, a TripAdvisor page pops up and then the user comes to TripAdvisor. So the leaving the bait in the previous layer is very important. Yeah. You have some examples wherein the players played in their own layer and failed up. Players played in that own layer, as in, uh, so you wouldn't have heard of such yeah, exactly. companies, so, right? So there are a lot of e-commerce companies that come and they die. Because A, either they failed to do SEO, SEO is a very important thing in internet because most of the users are with Google. So you need to get from the Google's layer to their own layer. Okay. Or they fail in uh, probably incentivizing the information layer. So, you know, when you go from TripAdvisor to ClearTrip, ClearTrip pays TripAdvisor to send every lead. So when you go from FindYogi to Flipkart, Flipkart pays FindYogi for every lead. So e-commerce company, you know, there are a couple of e-commerce companies that pay less to us as compared to Flipkart and Amazon. So we, they wouldn't know, but we wouldn't put them on the site. Only when they are the cheapest sellers, we'll put them on the site so that, you know, the user, uh, the user, you know, doesn't feel cheated. But if they are still the costliest seller, you know, user is not going to buy from them. I'm not getting any money. So it, as well, I wouldn't list it, right? So if you're not interacting with your outer layer, probably you'll, you'll die and you'll die very fast. And uh, you know that interaction. You can say it's part of the product. It's part of the marketing. I mean, and so usually by default, any product or the 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 owner of the product actually tries to go into every yes, layer. Yes. It's it's kind of by default. Even if you look at uh, offline, you know, offline. Say I am. Uh, there's this famous antivirus company based out of Pune. Uh, semantic. Semantic. No, no, no. semantic is not Indian. Uh, Kaspersky. No, no, no. no. There is Quick Heal, sorry, yeah, Quick Heal. So Quick Heal is uh, distributed at offline stores. So offline stores are given some incentive to just stock up Quick Heal antivirus, okay? And then from every sales, they are paid something. Versus Quick Heal makes a website and say, okay, anybody wants Quick Heal, come and buy it over here. But the point is, you know, you are buying the computer at an offline store and the antivirus needs to be sold at that point. If you're going to keep it on a separate website, you are probably missing the point of purchase, right? Again, Quick Heal has to be marketed on Flipkart when the user is buying a laptop. 
right? That is so, how sometimes you get this combo options when you buy something. Absolutely, absolutely. And the combo options help push the e-commerce company. The main product is also pushed. And obviously things like Quickiel are more a subscription thing. So that one year acts like a free trial or something. Find Yogi, sorry? Uh, no, we do we do some kind of advertising on Google, but about 99% of our Google traffic is free. I mean, we don't pay Google for that traffic. But in some cases where we aren't ranking very high on Google, we pay Google to rank us higher. So, what are that so what that is what we call as search engine optimization there are two parts of it you know a you make very good content and represent it in a very good way very good way means the you know the html the semantics and all should be good and there is uh, the offline part of it where a lot of sites are linking back to you so the way of search engine optimization works is you know uh, if i'm a blog i write about find yogi and i link back to find yogi google counts that as a vote so if you see read wikipedia you know almost every new term on wikipedia page is connected to the definition of that word right so that internal linking is what google reads and ranks pages so if find yogi is getting a lot of backlinks from a very from a lot of high value websites google would believe that this is a good page to rank higher and again google will also look at user feedback so suppose somebody suppose you know you look for uh, samsung galaxy s5 and find yogi is the first link for example and you clicked you went to find yogi within 30 seconds you came back and you searched for the same term on google or you clicked on the second link google will take that as a negative feedback for find yogi google will say that for this keyword the link that i showed to this user did not match it did not serve the purpose so next time if this happens quite often google will rank me lower so that is what you need to master it's a mix of product and marketing I mean, your product should be good. The information that you're serving should be good, and marketing, as in, are you influencing the bloggers to get link backs to you? And so, I have a question uh, regarding the Google. So, Google uh, gets its revenue from advertisements, right? Right. So, what is the product out here with respect to other uh, websites who are trying to advertise there? I said I, I didn't get your question. Sorry. So my question would uh, revolve around like how the, how it is going to a, from the information layer to the uh, product layer. So, so Google, I told you, is the network layer, and it's actually a mix of network and information layer. Okay. Right. As Find Yogi, I want traffic. Okay, I want a lead on my website. I am not, according to Google's natural algorithm, I'm not able to rank higher. I'll pay Google to rank me higher. So what is the product here? The product is the information that user is looking for. So this would mean that even though I don't go to the product layer, I can get a revenue between the information and the Yes, layer. yes. But again, the user hasn't paid up yet. Okay. So to for revenue to go all the way up to the network layer, you know, somebody needs to buy this product. So if the user comes from Google to Find Yogi, and from Find Yogi he doesn't go to Flipkart, I don't make money. So I won't survive long. If he goes from Flipkart and he again from Flipkart also he goes and buys this product, he's covered up some money. And this will go back all to the top. Right? So the user needs to spend money on the internet. Otherwise, it's just internet companies exchanging money, and probably the same VC who funded all the internet companies. So you know, it's his money rotating between bank accounts. Again, successful businesses, you know, they are always a mix of two layers. You cannot be only a transaction layer, only an information layer. So there are companies who've been only transaction layer, uh, very big when they started. CC Avenue, for example, was India's biggest payment gateway okay even today the number of banks that cc avenue has integrated with nobody else has done that but cc avenue is an irrelevant company in internet world today because nobody bothers you know if there is cc avenue connected or not you know there is paytm.com paytm has its own payment gateway i'm going to transact on paytm okay so the whole transaction layer can be a commodity if you don't do value adds if you look at you know e-commerce e-commerce is actually a logistics company you know, if you are going to make a phone call and get pizza delivered, or you are going to uh, tap few buttons on your app and get pizza delivered, it's probably the same thing, right? So, Domino's over there is uh, a logistics company, right? But that way, Blue Dart should have been the biggest e-commerce company in India. But what Blue Dart did is stuck to the transaction layer. It was only fulfilling the orders, nothing else, right? If the product inside is bad, Blue Dart is not responsible. 
if the product is delayed, you have to contact Flipkart, not Blue Dart, right? So they've lost that market. Okay. So if you're not communicating between two layers, or you know, best is to own two layers. What uh, Snapdeal did not do, and what Flipkart did is, Flipkart invested in the information layer very heavily. Snapdeal did not. So you know, now they have, you know, for the last one year they have started investing. What happens is the cost of lead generation is lower for Flipkart because when you search on Google, you directly go from network layer to the transaction layer, right? Because Flipkart is already ranking high. Whereas, you know, for Snapdeal or a, if a website is launching, new website that is launching, they'll have to depend on the information layer. So when you invest in two layers, you probably reduce your cost of user acquisition. So again, some examples. Transaction, the trust factor is very important in the transaction. So you know, uh, if you are going to say that you know uh, X Y Z, yeah. Cost of, in or maybe you know, because they were a late mover in the whole market, they probably wanted to build a stronger transaction layer and then go and build an information layer. Uh, Flipkart actually did it the other way around. They actually built the information layer first. The transaction layer wasn't very strong. And when I say transaction layer, uh, the logistics control is very important. Every e-commerce company is actually a, a delivery company. Logistics control is very important. Flipkart has invested heavily for which, you know, a lot of VCs would criticize uh, Flipkart saying that, you know, not a very capital in, uh, capital efficient thing to do. Whereas uh, Snapdeal hasn't, you know, Paytm uses uh, Blue Dart and all other courier companies. Amazon is starting to build its own logistics company now, right? So again, that logistics bit is, sorry. So info, uh, information, again, Flipkart, if when you look at information, Flipkart has a lot of reviews. It has filters. It can help you decide what to buy to some extent, right? So that is what information layer does. It helps you discover new products. It helps you decide and make better purchase. Okay. The only problem with Flipkart as an information layer is that if a product is not available on Flipkart, you wouldn't know about it. So you probably need an independent player like Find Yogi or you know, in travel space, you need somebody like TripAdvisor. So that even if something is not available with a particular transaction player, the information layer is still going to help you get deep. Right. So you say, I have, you have not paid to Google anything. Right. But the, the efforts, what you put, you said like a lot of blogs. Yes. But again, they probably convince all other people to have to write blogs about you or create a kind of thing so that you get this. Right, so that is what marketing would do. If my product is very good, if Find Yogi as a website is very good, then bloggers would be excited to write about it. That is what happened to us in free charge. You know, people were excited because it was a very noble idea. People were excited, so you know, there's something called bragging rights, and they enjoyed that bragging right. Whether it's Find Yogi, you know, there are a lot of mo similar models in the US market. In Indian market as well, there are a lot of similar models, only differentiating themselves in terms of minor features. But overall, the idea is almost the same, helping you decide either what to buy or where to buy from. So I think that is one of our failures, not being able to convince a lot of marketers, you know, a lot of bloggers to write about us, a lot of media people to write about us. So once that happens, we'll be probably ranking amongst the top in the network layer, as you said. <laughs> so Flipkart has done that very well, you know, because when you were saying that, you know, my S5 got delivered by Flipkart in one day, you're actually linking back to the S5 page of Flipkart, which Google counts as a vote. So that helps them rank higher. But it takes a lot of time for people to realize or recognize or acknowledge uh, these players like Find Yogi, right? But that's it. Like, that time, so you should, uh, you should uh, I mean, uh, you either get a lot of VC money and survive, or you figure out some kind of revenue model. Keep your cost low and figure out some kind of revenue model. So, you know, we raised about $100,000 from an angel investor when we started. And we managed to burn that money in 12 months uh, without a product, without a team, without any traction. Okay. Uh, we had some 5 lakh rupees in the account. And from there on, we've gone cash flow positive. Which isn't, a, you know, it's a very rare thing to happen on with internet companies to actually become profitable. A uh, lot of VCs wouldn't appreciate that because startups are not about profitability in the short term, they're about long term growth. 
you are a startup because you are growing the way the day you become stagnant i mean you're dead again you are either growing big 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 or you you don't exist something that happened with uh, cc avenue for example right again in the network layer i said it has to be all humans network layer is the most defensible layer that you can build if you can build a facebook you can build a instagram you can build a google i mean that's the most defensible thing you are very far from the product when you are in the network layer but uh, in a long term value will be higher okay you have very little control on what product what should be the price of the product when should the product be delivered etc okay but because there are uh, you know very most of the things are externally controlled when you are trying to control humans it's all externally controlled whereas in the transaction layer how fast will it be delivered what is the price these are all inter internally controllable attributes so again transaction layer you'll probably become a a commodity faster than the network layer so you know it's if the price is same and assuming both flipkart and amazon are promising a 7 day delivery there are chances i mean then you know you'll probably rate them as the same you know if they both are uh, promising 7 days delivery and flipkart is 1 rupee cheaper you'll probably go with flipkart or if amazon is 1 rupee cheaper you'll probably go with amazon so the it's easy to become a commodity so that is why you'll need a lot of hooks like amazon has amazon prime and flipkart launched their flipkart first program you'll need a lot of hooks to bring the customer back paytm does this very well with cashbacks you know every transaction will have some kind of cashback and the, you know that will bring you back for the next transaction also the revenue part like paytm like they are giving a huge cashback right how they are getting the money they are not internet companies don't make money <laughs> no anyways but uh, long term they will make money okay but you can count this as a user acquisition cost so suppose i bought a laptop for 80000 rupees on paytm they give me a 9000 cashback that 9000 also i'm going to spend on paytm itself they have a they have a you know option to uh, redeeming it back into your bank account but you would not do that because that process is a little cumbersome so you will keep that money there and you will keep spending that 9000 and the player has the advantage of that thing is saving the cost They don't have to do it. Uh, they can market. Uh, yes, I mean, in that case, you are probably owning network information transaction everything, right? Yes, yes. You can. See, yes, I mean, you are that network, which is why I created this thing. You know, you can probably go from here directly over here. So, Google does for some of the products that Google has. You know, it is the network layer, it is the information layer, it is the transaction layer. uh let's say the google app store okay so you are on an android phone so you have the play store app right so network is with google you are looking for a new app on the information layer in the play store app you are going to pay the play store and download the app that you need so google owns the whole thing and that is why you know play store or the ios app store is is the biggest thing for them you know amazon also has their own on app store because you own all three layers that is why you know all the big companies they are trying that you use their hardware their os their servers their applications so that they can own the whole value chain the so next uh, bundling versus uh, unbundling uh, when you start a internet company or you start any any business it's important to focus on one one thing as in one product one target audience one geography one device if it's a you know a web versus a app kind of thing that focus will help you validate your idea if you are going to say that you know from day one i'm going to be on mobile i'm going to be on ios i'm going to be on android you will probably not achieve anything if you can just say i'll i'll make an android app if it does very good i'll expand to web if it does very good i'll expand to ios by the time you have your android app out you'll know whether it's going doing very good or not okay and the way to disrupt a uh, existing market is to unbundle something out of that market okay example you know zomato so just dial is like a 15 year old company zomato comes in zomato says i'm going to just take out the restaurant part out of the just dial and i'm going to do a little more value add i'm going to also put the menu which nobody else was doing there was a company called burp.com which actually died because of some management complications etc but uh, they were the first one to actually put the menu out there zomato said we'll put menu for 100% of the restaurants that are listed with us and they've been able to capture that 
thing, you know. But if you look at, you know, internet in general, you are either building a, unbundling one of the classified sites. So, you know, uh, say, Craigslist is probably one of the oldest classified site, not very popular in India, but very popular in the US market. So, you are either building some kind of classified uh, related to matrimonial, related to housing, jobs, or just buying and selling old products, right. So, again, you are unbundling something out of Craigslist. So, uh, I'll give an example of this. Well, we'll first come to bundling. So, Flipkart, if you look at, you know, they started with books. We said we'll just do books. We'll do only in India. We'll do only for people who have credit card. Okay. So, that's a good starting point. You excel in that. You built your logistics thing. You built your payment thing. Now, you have to expand your logistics and you have to expand your payments and you have to expand your product. Then it said, you know, we'll probably start selling music CDs, DVDs, which flopped because music CDs, DVDs died. Then it said, we'll do mobile phones, then consumer electronics, then everything, right? So that becomes a very good starting point. And you do generally do bundling when you have to scale up from point X to going to that billion dollar market. But there are some companies, uh, Deliver, for example, Deliver is some five year old company based out of Bangalore, not very popular because it hasn't spent a lot of money in marketing, but it was delivering everything right from your restaurant food to dropping your, you know, dirty laundry at the, at the band box or, you know, delivering meat and fish, delivering all kinds of groceries, delivering cakes, flowers, everything. So it was the delivery platform. Didn't do very well because, you know, probably, so that is a good example of bundling a lot of services, but it didn't do very well because maybe users didn't recognize what deliver means. Is, is deliver a restaurant delivery system, restaurant food delivery system or is it a grocery delivery system? Because as a consumer, you look at them as a very, as two different things, right? So, does bundling uh, require a good infrastructure? No, that is how you scale. So, you know, if you start, uh, you start Facebook from Harvard, right? And then you say, I am only focused on this one university and I'm only for college students, right? And then you keep bundling every other college into this. Okay, so that is how Facebook goes from unbundling to bundling. But if you look at what Facebook was trying to unbundle was MySpace. MySpace was this universal social network, but Facebook said we'll only focus on this one university. Right. But uh, there are very rare examples of how you can be a new startup and start with bundling. Very rare. Okay, for example, you'll actually have to spend a lot of money in marketing. Quicker, for example, quicker. From day one, it is classifieds for everything not a great way to start things, okay, but obviously it spent a lot of money, it's got the user. At scale it works, at scale you cannot be just a car classifieds company, you know, there are probably more old cars listed on quicker than car wale, car dekho, gaadi .com combined, okay, at, at scale you have to be a horizontal player, okay, but uh, you know, that cannot be a good starting point because you don't know where to focus on, you wouldn't know your idea is not working because, you know, your marketing will be like a mile wide and an inch deep. It wouldn't work. Again, I'll give you some examples. Super Prof is a Bangalore based startup. They do online coaching for CA students. Uh, they were actually a video compression engine. They built a video compression engine. They wanted to market it to uh, professional, you know, to teachers who want to host their own classes. They realized that, you know, we have to help them market also. So they could have been the online coaching class from day one but they wanted to focus on one particular vertical and they call themselves super prof because super prof does not mean CA classes. So they can easily expand to being other things, but it's, it's being a CA coaching only is a good starting point. You very niche audience, right? Defined geography, defined, uh, uh, and it's only on the desktop. So again, de defined device. My notice period is probably somebody told me it's one of the PESET uh, graduates who started my notice period. So it's a hiring uh, site. And it's only meant for people who, ha who are serving their notice period. So the idea is, you know, uh, the HRs really, uh, you know, generally need people who can join very fast. So somebody who's in, on their notice period prob probably can join faster. And uh, but when they wanted to scale up, they actually had to change their name to Hiri. So not a great thing to do. But had they had the vision, maybe it would have failed if they call themselves Hiri from day one. Maybe it would have failed because my notice period is on the face. It clearly defines what it is for. Right. And if you see scaling from my notice period to hire, it's not a tough thing, you know, from a technology point of view, the way it is done is uh, say a notice period can be anywhere between 180 days to one week. All right. For a fresher, the notice period is zero days. Okay. 
And even if I'm not on my notice period, you know, and my company requires a notice period, my current company requires a notice period of 60 days, I can probably attend an interview tomorrow and resign day after tomorrow. I'll serve a 62 days notice period. So it's only about scaling the number of days, right? But obviously it's again a different market. Instagram, Instagram is a very good example of unbundling. I'll only take out the photos from Facebook and build a new thing. And I'm going to make photos a lit look a little better. I'll make, you know, even ugly people look better on my photos. So uh, WhatsApp is a great example. You know, I'll only take out the chat feature from Facebook and build something. Okay, and from there on, from chat, I can probably build the whole thing. Right. Uh, there's this company called IIMjobs.com. It's only for management graduates from top schools. The same company started HighRisk.com, which is only for technology jobs. So it was the same technology platform, two different uh, target market, two different branding. You might call it good, you might call it bad, but you know, I mean, that is the way it is. Then they're just unbundled things. Right. A uh, good example of bundling unbundling is, you know, when Make My Trip started, it was a flight booking engine. When they wanted to scale up on becoming the whole holiday player, they had a tough time rebranding themselves because people had this perception that, you know. I mean, make my trip means flight, not hotels. They had this perception. Similar thing is happening with Ola cabs. Okay, so it's very early for Ola. I'm not sure how many know that Ola actually does food delivery as well. There's something called Ola Cafe. Very early days to say something, but you know, people look at Ola as a cab company. If I'm going to open the app, I'm going to book cab, right? If I need food, I'll probably go to Zomato, Tiny Owl, Food Panda, etc. Okay. And now Ola is so Ola Cafe was inside the Ola cabs app. But Ola store is a separate app. So you need to be very sure as a business, they are bundling things because they call themselves logistics company, right? So I can move people, I can move food, I can move groceries, right? But uh, from, from a user facing thing, they are two different things, which probably Facebook has done. Messenger and Facebook app are two different things, you know, easier to market. Even uh, at a small scale, uh, Foursquare and Swarm, they are two different apps. But probably addressing the same market, a lot of users would overlap. Flipkart again, you know, bundling from books, it went to a whole way. Zomato, the way Zomato has been bundling, A, it is bundling on at geographical level. It was only at India in India. Now it is probably in over 10 countries, right? Uh, it was only showing you menus and helping and giving you a phone number. Nothing beyond that. They did not book tables for you. Now they are also doing uh, table booking in some geographies. They are doing food delivery in Bangalore and Mumbai, I believe. And they are also getting into payments, something called, uh, I don't know, Zomato Cash or Zero Cash, something like that, so that you can do cashless transactions at restaurants. So again, all this is important because ultimately you have to become the biggest player. If you're not the biggest, you'll die. So there's a very rare example of, you know, uh, e-commerce company concentrating on one vertical and uh, still doing good. Uh, it's called Zivame.com. I'm not sure a lot of heard it's for uh, uh, female undergarments. So, and it's doing very well because it's been able to brand themselves very well probably. I don't know what other factors are there, but there's one of the rare examples where they focus just on one vertical and still survived. Third thing, pipe versus platform. So, uh, there's this guy called uh, Sangeet Paul Chaudhary. You should probably read his uh, blog. It's called platform.info. Uh, it will give you an insight into how to think about your you know, your marketing strategy, your product strategy, etc. So he gives a theory called, uh, you know, pipe versus platform. Pipe is when the value creation is done by a single unit. Okay, so Flipkart, when it was an e-commerce company, I mean, an e-retailer, all the products that were sold on Flipkart was sold by WS Retail, which is like one entity. And it was part of Flipkart. Right? But when Flipkart becomes bigger, Flipkart needs to open up their their internet platform and their logistics platform, their inventory platform, warehousing platform for everybody. Now Flipkart becomes this giant marketplace where everybody is selling, right? So, and a lot of times when, when we think of internet idea, we do think of the ultimate value that is being delivered to the user, but we do not think of how that value will be created. And the pipe, when you are a pipe, you are a, you know, the, the value is created by a single entity. When you are a platform, you are opening up the value creation thing. So YouTube is a platform for anybody who makes video content, right? Whereas if I have to look at uh, TVF, the viral fever, anybody heard of that? It's a 
it uh, creates comedy series and all. It's one of the most popular channels on YouTube. It's a production house. So it's a publisher. It create the, the atomic unit is that video and the creation is controlled by one business. That is TVF. Whereas YouTube, anybody can create that value, which is a video and upload it on YouTube. And what YouTube does, it helps it market well. So if I have to look at a standalone blog versus a medium.com. Medium is, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of medium.com. It's a blogging platform and you don't get your own domain. You have to, you know, the article is on medium.com slash the, the slug. But uh, medium also helps you market that thing. Whether, whereas when you are a standalone blog, it's your blog, you market it on your own. Somebody else's user doesn't come to you. Whereas on Medium, you know, when you're reading one article, at the end it will show you articles from other authors on Medium.com. Very similar to what YouTube is. If you're seeing one video from one video creator, it will show you similar videos from other creators as well. Okay. So you, a lot of times when you're defining your idea, you will be confused as to are you trying to become a pipe or are you trying to become a platform. It's a blogging site, yes. So WordPress is a blogging software, right? You can take the WordPress software, install it on your own server, install, get your own domain and keep it to yourself and WordPress has nothing to do with it. It will just keep sending you free updates of the software. But Medium says, you know, you have to blog on my platform. For example, Quora, Quora is a platform where the answers are on Quora. It's not like Quora is distributing a software, it's only distributing the content, right? Same for YouTube. Right? You can host your content on YouTube and take it on your own website, but it will still be served from YouTube.com. Right? So it's important. So when you create something valuable, okay, you have to see if you can unbundle it. So when I look at Flipkart, it's an internet company that does internet marketing very well, the information layer. It's a warehouse company. It's a logistics as in the delivery part as well. It's a payment gateway as well. Okay. As a seller, I can choose to use the information that Flipkart has a website and any of the three layers. You know, when I'm host selling my product on Flipkart, I have to use their payment gateway or I can use a COD mechanism. Then I can go and store my products in their warehouse and I can also use, and when it's in their warehouse, they, I use their delivery system. So if you created something very valuable, you should look at if you can convert parts of it into a platform. I think Amazon is one company that has been very successful in doing this. AWS was built by the Amazon.com engineering team, right? Internally, for internal uses. They've scaled up every product. And AWS, I think it went profitable this uh, quarter. So again, internal things, right? And again, logistics, warehousing, all those things are internally controlled. Yeah. Right. If you can control the value, so the thing between pipe and platform is the user doesn't care. A lot of users don't even know that Flipkart, whatever is sold on Flipkart is not sold by Flipkart, right? It's sold by somebody else. Flipkart is not responsible for that. Right. So if uh, the end value is should be same, okay? So if you're I'm not sure how many of you follow 9gag, uh, it's a site for posting memes and you know some inter interesting comics, etc. Whereas there is a site called scoopoop.com. Scoopoop, I'm sure you must have seen it on Facebook. You know, most of the viral articles are from Scoopoop. Scoopoop is a publisher where the, the writers are employees of that company. Okay. Nine gag, anybody can post their art, their stuff there, and if it gets enough upwards, it features on the home page. Right? So the end value is probably say, if I say entertainment is the value delivered, it does not matter to the user whether he's reading nine gag or scoopoop. Right? But what matters is internally how was that value created. So pipe versus pa platform, again, the, it is not about what you created. It is how that creation was done. This user audience should al always be the same. When Flipkart, you know, it grew from only selling books to everything. It went from only WS retail as one of the merchants to a lot of retailers now. The end value delivered to the user is still the same. And probably the experience is almost same. And that is why Flipkart has been successful. You know, had Flipkart lost the experience, you know, assuming when I'm ordering from WS Retail, 
uh, I get products delivered in three days and if I'm ordering from some other merchant, you know, I'm getting that order delivered in 15 days. It means there's a difference in experience and the users won't like it. So there's, a, if you have money in your Flipkart wallet, you can use it on WS retail, but you cannot use it to buy products from other sellers. Again, the experience is not the same. So when you are scaling up from being a pipe, I'm not saying that you have to be a pipe or have to be a platform. If you can figure out a good model in being a pipe, I mean, nothing like it. But uh, if you have to, you know, grow platform is, you know, you have to probably become a platform, right? For example, news channels are all pipes, single value creation, all the people who submit, all the editors and all the reporters are employees, right? Probably it won't be, you know, capital efficient. But when you become a platform, if you say, you know, anybody can submit news and I'll just help highlight whatever is popular or you can choose to see whose news you want to see, then you probably become Twitter. So they started with just 140 characters. Now then they started, uh, allowed you to post photos. Now you can integrate with Vine and also post videos. Now they have another called uh, Mirkut, not, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. They have a live video blogging platform, right? So they are probably a full, full fledged news agency with no employees. Right. Yes, that is what platform does, you know, it helps, it it gets everybody online, but it does that moderation part as to who will be surfaced on top. That is what you do as a platform, whereas, you know, had you been a news agency, you know, had you been a NDTV.com and assuming all the news that is coming in is coming from NDTV employees, you know, then you've paid for every news that has been created. Whereas on YouTube or on Google, you haven't paid for those videos. YouTube hasn't paid for those videos to be created. But when a video goes viral, when a video becomes very popular, YouTube will make sure it's on the home page so that more people will click on it. And then the YouTube's home page becomes a property in itself. People will start paying to be on YouTube's home page. Right. So, so platform acts as an influencer. Platform acts as an influencer. It acts as a facilitator for the value creator. So I am a video production house. I don't know how to distribute it over the internet because creating a video distribution system is what a technology company does. And of creating a video is what a probably an entertainment or media house does, right? So YouTube acts as my plat technology platform, right? So it does both, it does the logistics part as well, delivering that video. It does the marketing part as well, surfacing that video. And I can probably pay YouTube to show my videos more often, right? So that is what YouTube as a platform does. Again with Flipkart, you know, anybody can go and sell Flipkart if they adhere to certain rules. But if you have to be on the top, uh, you know, on the home page or something, you either, you pay more to Flipkart, you price the products lower so that users will like it. If users like it, users will start liking Flipkart as well. So again, the platform does that moderation thing and the facilitator. Right. So Flipkart's algorithm in particular looks at the rating of the seller. So even if it is a higher priced, they will look at if, you know, this is rated like 86%, the lower price seller is at 75%, Flipkart will probably show you 86% rated seller. At times, it is also based on delivery, who will deliver fastest at your pin code. I don't think Flipkart does that thing right now. Amazon does that in the U in US. And it is also profit driven. So if Flipkart thinks that I can probably show him this higher price thing and he'll still buy it. And a lot of people do buy it. People think that, you know, because Amazon is showing this one at the top, this is probably the best one. So I'll, even if it is like 5% costlier, I'll buy it from here. 
Yes, Amazon is doing that in India also, uh, but it isn't controlling to a lot of extent. In in India, I think there are certain laws that are preventing it, or probably some other reason, because the way it is in US, it doesn't happen in India. One other reason is also because the pricing, uh, you know, Amazon is not a merchant in India, but Amazon is a merchant in US. For their own products, they can do dynamic pricing. But since Amazon is not a merchant in India, I mean, they cannot do dynamic pricing. They influence a lot of merchants who work closely with the the Amazon team or just, you know, actually controlled by the Amazon team, but legally different entities. But again, they don't do dynamic pricing as of now. Uh, but they do, you know, in the sorting of which seller to throw on top or which seller to show on the front page, they do some kind of stuff. Sure. So, that is it. Uh, again, coming back to this thing, right? If you can figure this, where your product lies and what are you doing? You know, there are already players in the market. So, what are you doing different from the player? And you think you want to become the biggest, what is your starting point? Okay. Zomato focused on just showing menus for a lot of, lot of time. For Zomato has been in the market for almost, I think, six or seven years. Right, so but it just focused on this while Food Panda, you know, and Tasty Khana, and uh, there was this uh, Just Eat, Just Eat dot com, Swiggy, and everybody's come. But again, where Zomato will actually win is in the user acquisition cost. You are already opening the Zomato app to look at the menu. You already know what Zomato is. You already know Zomato is equal to food. So Zomato could be moon, uh, could mean food, you know, delivery, food payment, or you know, booking a table important to you know make sure that you win the market with what you are doing you know if you keep expanding without winning one market no no i mean you are probably confused you are probably a genius who has a very big plan or it's it's maybe it won't work but in internet what we've seen is generally if you expand without capturing one audience you know you are going to fail uber for example you know it started with one city and it proved that the business model is working in one city and it's expanded to a lot of cities. Uber has only three employees in every city, in every part of the world. Five now? Okay, so from what I know, it's one for user acquisition and the marketing side, one for driver acquisition and driver marketing, and one for handling government and legal stuff. Okay, because and technology all centrally driven. So if you figured out with one market or with, you know, one niche, it will be easier for you to expand. But if you are going to do everything from day one, you wouldn't know whether you are feeling in technology, you are feeling in user acquisition, and what is going wrong. You are trying to control too many variables. And it's not a, a great idea to control more than one variable when you are just starting up. Yes, yes, and that is what, you know, as an investor, a lot of VCs look at. I mean, this is the starting point, but where is it going to go? So I remember, you know, uh, Sachin Bansal was talking in one of the events saying that, you know, when we went to raise money, we were asked if we can make a $100 million market. And today, you know, Flipkart is probably upwards of $10 billion, right? So, again, that vision should be there that probably this can be become, become very, very, very big. But that starting point is important. Otherwise, you'll keep changing ideas. If you realize, Flipkart did not really change their idea. They were e-commerce company from day one. They were making money from advertising. They have started again making money from advertising, okay. but overall the idea was same. Ola was earlier called Ola Trip. I think they wanted to be a travel agent. Then they became just cabs, right? Focusing on and very similar to the Uber model, but executed in a very Indian way, because things like you know accepting cash, or scheduling a booking, or you know taking a, a booking on phone. Those things are very Indian things to do. So probably they are you know better than Ola in Indian context that way. Uh, better than Uber, sorry. So uh, thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, uh, Naman for the time you have spent here. And one more thing, you know, one more, f uh, one more thing I, I just missed out. Uh, he's a continuous blogger. And next big what? Which was blogged in. So if I want to evaluate your idea or something, there are a lot of articles he publishes. And I myself also for our idea, laundry on demand. One of the articles I read where you have mentioned what are the laundry startups in India. So that's what, uh, you know, we had influence and from there we are here. So thanks a lot, uh, Naman. Uh, probably I just request you to write a mail ID so that uh, anybody wants to get in touch for any queries. So that will be good enough.
It's uh, naman at findyogi.com. Okay, that's pretty much there. So thanks a lot. And uh, any questions, you can, of course, put a mail to him. And uh, with this, we are done for the, this session. And there will be one more session by Mr. Uday Prabhu. And we'll take it from there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll just request for a token of appreciation. Uh, I'll request Mr. Senar, his MD of his own startup, to give the momento to Mr. Naman. Thank you. Thank you.